and I'm not saying it's wrong or right, but it just doesn't seem to be working, does it, anymore? No. Um, to swear to stay with that person till you die. You know, is that is that is that really what we're supposed to do? I'm not quite sure about that. I was reading the other day. Um, it was a cartoon thing of like uh, humans being a virus to the world. And then someone called the guy out straight away. He was like, you know, fuck all about indigenous people, eh? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, he was like, man, you, you're getting post-industrial, bringing back that again, post-industrial revolution humans that got conditioned to live by the hour, you know, like by, by the dollar, you know, and you're forgetting that actually we've been part of this, this thing from the beginning so but then what what got me in in that discussion was like maybe something to do with the ego because it, i don't know if animals have ego you know like i i haven't had a good proper my cat is is, is an interesting one must be, must <laughs> your cat might have a big ego very egocentric man but, seems like it hey yeah. well, we've got a cat too but sometimes it, like... it gets some of the l's right my cat oh, you yeah, know sometimes yeah. it doesn't it doesn't love me that much but it's leaving a legacy <laughs> ball of legacy man um but but that's that was my reflection that's why i kind of like to connect all the th few things with like spirituality and, and us because now scientists are happy because they are learning that insects feel pain i'm like what the fuck? it feels like we should be worrying about other things you know like man the insects are running this world you know like without them we're fucked and, and we're losing and, and you were so prepotent prepotence is that the word prepotent of thinking that that the thing doesn't have feelings or, 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 or pain or whatever you know like what about learning from them look at what they're doing if if, if we live it's because of them and we mistreat them you know so the ego the thing with the ego kept coming back to my to my mind you know like it it's it's an exercise and it's not easy to no. deal with it but there's a lot of answers when you look at it at least right the thing with awareness that we were talking about before that's what i was about to say exactly exactly it's ego isn't isn't an enemy because if you try and make it an enemy then it's you know okay you you, you suddenly have a a life um, experience that gets you to question your ego you know and um we we generally most of us have them at some stage um, and it's not not having ego. It's it's not about not having ego, but again, it's all about being aware of it, isn't it? And how much it drives you, and how much it it, it affects others. You know, because if it if it's out of hand, that's um, narcissism, and that's um, malevolence. You know, that's 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 um, it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> it's not good for those around those people. That are that are malevolent and narcissistic because their ego has gone wild, and they're probably so removed from that spirit that you're talking about. Spirituality to me is that connection to everything. Everything is connected, absolutely everything. And and uh, you know, um, I was very lucky to go to a school which was very. Um, uh, cross-cultural we had Chinese and some of those Chinese were fifth generation Kiwis so they'd been here way longer than me and they spoke you know they had the Asian features but they spoke pure Kiwi <laughs> you know there's, there's no hint of any Chinese they wouldn't know how to speak Chinese uh, Islanders uh, Islanders and Maori from the East Cape and we it was such a diverse um, biodiverse school I was so fortunate to that because I never saw colour. I never even, never don't see it at all. I don't, you know, it's, you're a person and I look in their eyes and that's how I, you know, either either trust you or I don't and that's it. And but I know that even yeah. the one I don't trust, I'm still connected to him. Yeah. I like that, I like that analogy with cells, you know, like it's like, it's, it's like uh, the human body, you know, like full of cells. Some of them are sick. Some of the sick cells get close to the healthy cells and make them sick but some of the healthy cells get close to the sick cells and, and and get them to work humans kind of operate in that way if you think hey mm. sometimes it is time to, to detach from someone to 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 leave 
someone or something behind because you got to look after your, your own cell. That can be hard when it's family. It can be hard. I'll tell you, Roger, the, the distance from my family, because now it's been nine years and we've seen each other once in, yeah, in these nine years. They live in Brazil? Yeah. They're coming for the first time in January for a visit. Oh, wow. How special. Who's they? Um, mom and dad. You Just your mom and dad? Yeah. So my, my sister came once to visit, so she's coming back again, which is cool. Uh, sorry, how many siblings do you have? One sister. Okay. She's two years older than me. Okay. Yeah, she's super excited. She's travel way more than me. Like she's much more out there, you know, like going to places. But she doesn't. She doesn't. She she's considering, but like she hasn't made a move to live at a different place. But she loves traveling, so she loves New Zealand. Like it's gonna be the second time, and she's very excited. Excellent. Yeah, but like the where I was going is that um, <clears throat> it it brought us together. We we we've, we've been together. We like we. we, we we're very respectful and we love each other, but like the distance made it stronger in an interesting way. And it also taught me to give priorities to, to, to things that I'm, that I'm up to because I see sometimes I miss my family a lot. And then I talk to my sister, then I talk to someone else in the family and they're bitching about the family. And I'm like, oh, cool. I get to, to miss them and love them, but I don't, don't get the bitching. <laughs> Can't get that, but <laughs> so it's actually good that they're only coming for 15 days. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, family are hard, eh? Yeah, but you were going there. You were going there with the the family uh, yeah, bond. Because you know, I don't know who makes the rules about that. You know, um, we grow up and you think you family. I mean, I was taught we had family values, and you stick with them. You know, you never you never abandon your family. You never abandon your family. But sometimes you have to let people go within your family. You have to let them go because they're toxic, you know, or, or they're just, they're just they just they have a different path. Just because they have your blood in you doesn't mean to say you have to be with them all the time. Or, you know, and what is love? It gets back to that question of what is what exactly is love? Banging your head against a brick wall isn't love. Mm. <laughs> and, and, and it might be that giving that space is the best thing you could you could mm. do. That's mm. where the love is. Mm. It's mm. understanding that maybe it's better to 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 keep the distance, and that might get to the relationship topic as well, right? Mm. Because sometimes there's respect, there's care, but the love is gone. The the that the chemistry is gone. Mm. It's tough. I'm not saying that it's easy, but it's it's it might be a sign that it's time to find a way to to set it free you know like to let that person go because it's better keep it a good respectful vibe while it's possible because we know that sometimes it goes bad mm. that's a that's a tough that's that's like the whole thing about marriage and divorce isn't there there's so many divorces now you know marriage is like like what 50 percent or something i don't know it's huge you know, people get married they get divorced and it's like what happens now mm. you know you but you've made this vow well what about the vow yeah, but you know, and I kind of I can see that's a very old uh, tradition, and I'm not saying it's wrong or right, but it just doesn't seem to be working, does it anymore? No. Um, to swear to stay with that person till you die, you know, is that is that is that really what we're supposed to do? I'm not quite sure about that. I mean, it's beautiful in a way, isn't it? It's kind mm. of romantic, but is it real? A lot of romance just comes out of Hollywood, doesn't it? Isn't it's not real. You know, I mean, people have been, what is it, um, especially in India, arranged marriages and actually a lot of places around the world for centuries arranged marriages have happened that have worked. And some of those people, I'm sure, love each other till the end. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, relationships are a tough one, isn't it? And we're not them. Mm. You know, they might look very happy mm. and we just don't know. That's another one because sometimes you put up with someone and then you accept that for your life. Mm. You know, like you might not even get to the point of value, valuing yourself enough to make a move. You're like, oh, it's fine. I'll put up with this because maybe breaking up is even worse. Mm. The uncertainty, mm. not knowing where it's going to take you. I think after. this comes back to attachment, not just with people, but with things as mm. well. It's a Buddhist thing, isn't it? Attachment. They try and release attachment to anything. And I know, you know, like the um, the Tibetans, when they make those mandalas, those beautiful mandalas out of sand, and they spend hours, months, even years making a mandala, and then they just 
to teach them not to be attached. Don't Ooh. even take a picture. Don't even to take put a photo of it <laughs> to put on Insta. Perhaps the modern Buddhists they might do they this. Might, <laughs> yeah, they, they all might. They might. Yeah. Stuff. You just watched to a North Bay show clip. If you want to watch the full show or if you want to see us live, subscribe to our YouTube channel and get notifications about our live streams. We do it three times per week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 p.m. And if you are more of a listener, go to altbase.nz to find out on which main podcast platforms we're on. Peace.